You don't need to know how to use code to use the Card Builder, but if you do, you can take advantage of more of its features. In today's tutorial, we'll walk through running the Builder locally, creating cards with the UI, and then creating cards from within your own code editor. We call this Dev Mode. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you have each of the prerequisites that are needed in order to run the project. That includes Git, NPM, Yarn, Node version greater than 12, as well as Docker. Next, clone the Cardstack repository from GitHub. The Cardstack repository contains the Builder app as well as some of the packages that it depends on. Next, go into the packages slash card host directory. That's where the Builder app lives. Next, we're going to get ready to start our local servers. There are three things that need to happen. First, we need to start up a Docker container that contains our Postgres database. This is done for you in just one command, yarn start prereqs. Make sure you have Docker running before you run this command. Now we'll start the front and back end servers using yarn start. Once the app is done building, you can visit the app in your browser at localhost 4200. Just to make sure everything's working right, let's go ahead and make a card. You can choose a template from the library of pre-made cards, give it a name, and try adding new fields into it or filling in some of the data. Once you're ready, go ahead and stop your local server. You can stop your local server with Control C. So far we've run the Builder app and made a card, um, but now it's time for us to explore how to save cards long term. We're actually going to create a Git repo on our own hard drive and then save the cards that we make into that Git repository. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new Git repository that's going to hold our card data. So outside of the card stack repository, I'm going to make a new folder. To turn this directory into a Git repository, I just need to type git init. The last thing I need is I'll want to make sure that I have the path to get to my new Git repo because I'll need that later on. Let's go back into our card stack repository and into our card host folder. This time we're going to start up our local server and we're going to tell the app and the hub, hey, please save my cards in this Git repository that I've designated. The way to set that configuration is with an environmental variable, devdir, short for dev directory. So we're going to say devdir equals the path to our cards repository. Now we'll do yarn start. The next thing we're going to do once the app is ready is we'll make a card. And this time we're going to be looking inside of that Git repository that we made to see the card document as well as to make changes to it. Just like we did before, let's create a new card. This time things should be different. If we open up our card repository, right over here, we can see that our new card has already appeared. If we open it up, we can look at the card.json, which is a file that contains all of the definitions for what this card should look like, as well as the data that it contains. Now let's go ahead and make our own card from scratch, something that's much simpler than this one so that we can see what types of changes are possible. And then let's take a look at the new document that popped up over here in our code editor. So we can see that our new card has only one field. It's called host name. If we wanted to, we could make changes directly within this file, save those changes, and then see those changes show up in our card. And we can see that our field is now titled MC.
If I wanted to make another text field, I could do that by dragging and dropping a text field using the UI, or I could duplicate this field that already exists. And then I need to make sure that my new field is included in the CS field order, as well as my host name list. If you'd like to learn more about what each of these properties does within a card, you can visit our guides at docs.cardstack.com and check out our article on card schema. All right, let's go ahead and save and see what our card looks like now. Great, so now I have a second field, biography. In this case, it would have been much easier to just drag and drop some fields in, but in other cases, when you're creating a lot of cards at once, it may be easier to take this code-based approach to modify and create new cards. All right, that's it. So now you know how to do advanced card creation using dev mode. To learn more, visit our guides at docs.cardstack.com.